Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and we are, yes, by the lapping of the waves on the water, we're not drowning hopefully, we are shore fishing. We're down here at Minehead and we've got three other local top guys, we've got Craig, we've got Charlie and we've got Paul. And we've got Mike, my son, who's obviously, woo, I haven't got the camera, he's got the camera. We're down here, we've just done a day's trout fish, we must be mad, from about 6.30, 7 in the morning get up, driven all the way down, done a trout session, got in the car, drove 200 miles down to North Somerset, and here we are on the beach, we're possibly about half a mile to the west of Minehead Pier, then they call it White Beach, we're going to try and catch if we can, a small eyed ray, I'm told they're here, not in numbers, a little bit early, we're going to give it a go, and um, fingers crossed we get something, hopefully, you know, there might be a thornback ray out there, who knows, might be catch baby coddling, well, it could even, it, it could even be a a bass you never know you never know here anyway i'm going to just have a word with craig get an idea about what this beach is about before it gets dark before we really hopefully get to wind a fish in well i hope we show you guys something let's go and see what craig has to say about it hi there fishing down uh down at minehead here uh low water mark um basically fishing anything really but hoping for a small eye ray or a spotted ray or a blonde ray um, fishing the tide now is ebbing, uh, low water is about 9.30 tonight, um, just hopefully we'll pick one up on the, on the ebb or the flood. Um, this mark here is a, a low water mark, generally fished three hours either side of low water. Um, you can see the ground we're, we're fishing on, stood on, or sat on, it's uh, pretty bouldery but it gives way to sand about 20 yards out at the moment um, and there's intermittent patches of, of rough ground out there but ma mainly sand. Um, yeah, just sort of fishing pulley rigs, um, sand eel, squid, may try a crab later, there could be an early smooth round about around, so it'll be worth a go for that really. And what size are these rays, what, you know, what size do they run off the shore here Craig? Um, anything from a pound up to well into double figures, um, there's been a, a few double figure uh, small eyes and blondes caught in the last month off here, um, and plenty of spotted rays from sort of a pound and a half up to sort of four pound, but two and a half pound being the average for a spotted. The spotted don't grow very big, do they? No, I think if you if you get one four pound, you know that's a half decent spotty really, and they they scrap well as well. Now, would you you wouldn't fish this on a spring tide, or would you? Uh, you could fish this on any tide really. It does you know any any tide, as long as it's over low water and aim at sort of three the side of, of low is fine. And you shouldn't lose gear then, yeah. Mm, there's always a chance to run a risk of losing the odd set because um, you don't know you might hit a sand ridge and you just pull into the sand and lose it or just tackle line slag line snags out there yeah um, and then there's rough patches of, of rock out there as well and stone um and what's, your, what's your real rod and reel set up there just um, run that through just got uh two 12 foot no 12 foot two uh 13 six uh ziplex rods uh one's a hsm a high speed match it's just a little bit small tide at the moment so it's a bit of a softer rod and the other one's a full tournament, still a bit like a Primo Synchro, um, a bit soft. It's not, nothing too too heavy, really. Uh, a couple of multipliers loaded with 15 pound uh, line, um, attached with 50 pound shock leader, five ounce impact leads and pulley rigs. That's, and that's it. So that's fairly it, yeah. basic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, basic. Nothing too complicated. Um, you know, you could. That's how I'm approaching it anyway. But you could you could put clip down rigs on there, two clip down rigs. They work. If you want to scratch fish or, or something, but I'm going for a ray. We're going for something big today, aren't we? Yeah, Hopefully, we get something. It. Yeah. Right. So Give it a crossed. go. But obviously, the mark we're fishing, uh, it's just getting into sort of twilight now. We're losing the light now. Um, and we're going to fish it into darkness. Um, one one thing I can't stress enough on this mark is the safety aspect. Um, obviously, I don't know if you can see with the camera the, the terrain, the, the boulders and stuff. Um, but underfoot, they're wobbly, slippy and it's dangerous basically uh, so you know it's not if you if you're not feeling up to the job of you know being thrown around a little bit just don't it's not worth fishing here for the safety uh, aspect and i'd say i nearly bought one of my anchor pressure lamps and i thought it was going to fall over and break the glass so you're better off with those headlamps aren't you yeah definitely a headlamp a big bright headlamp is is imperative really for for night fishing down here and you know, forget and for getting back as and well. for getting back yeah definitely but um one thing like i say you know, safety is paramount down here um, you know, you've only got a twist on these rocks, do your ankle, fall over, smash your head, it's a nightmare. Um, 
many an angler, experienced and novice, have been, you know, won't come down here just purely because it's a nightmare. Okay. But not it's not to put anyone off, but it's just a realistic view of what yeah, the mark bit, is. Yeah, a bit of respect for the yeah. mark, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, you, know, what you, can't, about... you can't come down here with a can of beer and think, yeah, this is going to be a jolly. It'll be a crack, you, yeah. Yeah, you're going to have, you're gonna, you're gonna have come, problems. Come to pieces on it. On the uh, point of, say, bite indication, Craig, when it's in the dark, yeah. what do you paint your tip, put a light uh, on it, isotopes, no, got, or what? What do you I've use? I've got a reflective um, tip tape on there, which. Um, I think one of the rods it's spiralled on it, and the other side, the other rod it's just plain, plain. Um, and obviously coupled up with a. Because you can get those sort of uh, tips as well that yeah, you can. You can get those tip lights, but they're yeah. not. You know, I'd, I'd avoid them really if you have to, just sure. because casting. It's a problem. No. Line wrap round it. It's a you know cause problems, but you know, tip tape, reflective tape on the top, sort of six to ten inches of your rod, and a good quality headlamp. Um, you know, be unfair to. To say this is the best one on the market because but you can get them quite cheap now, can't oh, you? There's, loads, there's so many decent ones. This is this is one of my choice. Yeah. And many other other anglers choose these. Um, Rechargeables or, or just no, it's just I'll have um, four AAs in there, uh, and I do. They are rechargeable batteries. Sure. Because you know, over a course of a a year, you're going to use loads of batteries. So it pays to spend 20 quid on a decent set of rechargeable batteries and yep. a charger. What does the torch cost? What does the actual head um, unit cost? This one's, I think it, the retail is 95, but you pick them up in all the shops for 75, 80 quid. Yeah. Um, it's a Princeton Tech Apex Light. They've been around for a good few years. And when I got it, it was the best, the best um, fishing accessory I've, I've brought in many years. And I still think it's it's up there with the best fishing accessory. Powerful as well, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, yeah. Well, we certainly and, and they, they, they're waterproof and I've had this one for four or five years now yeah and if I lose it I'll replace it with one yeah. with one of them so yeah, and there's exactly. loads there's loads of different it doesn't have to be this one there's there's loads of decent quality ones and it's and you need something powerful on here to see where you're going I see Charlie well, winding down I don't know if he's onto a fish here or not Let's just uh, have he's a look had a couple of dogfish already he's had a couple of fish on yeah, it I think Paul's had a, another dogfish up there but when that light when that light does go away, we'll uh, hopefully see a few more fish. Do the rays feed any better in the dark than they do <coughs> on the in the daylight? Uh, doesn't seem to doesn't seem to matter really. To be fair, oh, Charlie's got a little fish there. Oh yeah, well, I wonder what that is. Or is it his bait? Oh, what? It's like a whiting or something. It's like a little whiting or something. Maybe he's yeah. got worm on. Yeah. Um, Jen, down here at the moment for the rays daylight and night time I've caught just as many in the daylight as I've caught in the dark but I think today it was a small tide it's one of the smallest tides of the year oh really yeah, yeah. and the water is pretty clean uh, the colors dropped out of it so yeah personally I think you know in the day the night time is better at the moment yeah yeah otherwise it's too clear if it was a medium-sized tide and there's color in the water then it wouldn't matter if it was day or night or whatever What type is that, Craig? Uh, it's a uh, small spotted, small spotted ray. Uh, you can tell it's a, a spotted, um, obviously covered in spots. Uh, can be confused with a blonde ray, uh, but with a blonde ray, uh, the, the spot will go right into this. Uh, into the edge the, there. Yeah, right into the frill of the of the skirt there. So. So the spotted just goes up to the edge there. Yep, that's it. So the spotted go stay in here, and then the blondes will go there. So it's a little male. You can see it's a. Uh, 
clasp was yeah. Clasp was that. So yeah. Okay, and what did that one take? Uh whole squid. Oh, yeah, whole unwashed right. squid. So there we go. Oh nice size race. So it'd be about an average off this beach, that one. Uh yeah, you get plenty of them this size. You know, this one's probably, you know, two pounds. A couple of pounds, yeah. A couple so of pounds. Nice to catch off the shore though, yeah. Isn't it? Always raise a smile, really, these little little babies. Raise a smile. I oh I like it, raise excuse, a smile. Excuse the pun. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Always can raise a smile. They're brilliant. I think they're probably one of the best little rays that fight like mad. Pretty, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. For the size, you know, if they grow to 10, 15 pounds, they'd really pull your arms off, right? That's my first codling I think we've had on here, it was snagged, but thanks to Craig, we managed to get it out. There you go Mike, there's a Look at little, that. little uh, spring codling. <laughs> Nothing massive, but he's a fish, isn't It's he? big for us at Hayling Island, That'd be, <laughs> you'd be chuffed with that. Well, we first just... way, perseverance was the, the yeah. keys getting out. Yeah, we to that one. Oh <laughs> yeah, when he was snagged, <laughs> was wouldn't he? Most yeah. people had just pulled off and broke yeah, we the left left him. Tethered, tethered fish there, but you would wait for the tide to drop we back. We let the tide drop back, yeah. Pulled him oh, back good in. man, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Good start, good start. Kick in the face with the fish as well. Yeah. <laughs> is it a fish? There he is, there he is, there he is. What is that? I don't know what it is. Nice doggy, isn't it? It is actually, yeah. That's a nice doggy, yeah. It's almost like an albino one from here. It's very, light. very light colour, isn't it? Yeah. Especially with 400 candle powers on it. <laughs> I'll tune that down a bit. Yeah, that's... Uh... What was on that one? Squid. Squid. Just, I think it might be a straight squid, I don't know. Brilliant. Good man. <laughs> nice. Okay, well after Mike had that dogfish, the tide's really starting to flood in now and it's pulling, it's dragging, and I can feel the leads are bumping around. I don't want them going in the snags. So what I've done is walk well up tide that way, fire out the leads out there, the grips catch further up tide, and then I let a belly of line go out, so it, the line actually comes down and around to the grip lead and helps pull it in like that. You've got to watch out for bites because if you get what we call a slack liner, it's when a decent big fish has dislodged that grip lead and the line falls slack. So a little tip when you've got a bit of a tide running, if it starts bumping and you see the rod top bonking away like this, that could just be the lead slipping. It might go into a, a snag or something like that. So walk up tide, cast out, feed some line back, let it come right round in the belly so the, the line is straight in front of you but your lead's up there. Just could get you that extra fish. Fish. We seem to be getting plagued by dogfish this evening now as, of, as we've lost the light. Um, as you see, it was a fair sized dogfish. Um, you know, it's probably, probably about two pounds really, which is not a bad, bad sized dogfish really. It seems to be a good run of half decent sized ones at the moment. Squid there, Craig? Yeah, whole squid again. Uh, obviously, we're, as it's a very small tide, um, the dogfish are they're quite obliging, but they can see they're just being lip hooked, which yes. is quite, quite nice really because. Uh, a bit thin. Sometimes you know, that would be straight down the down the throat and getting the hooks out is a bit of a nightmare. But How are the other loads doing up further up? Load the fish are chucked really, but yeah. it's small codling, small pin white in, and dogfish every chuck really. And I'm getting dogfish every cast now. So. And that's quite a nice size one too. Yeah, he's right. Again, you know, you know, catching them from the shore. Not about, you know, a lot of people people curse them, but you know, I can't see how they can dislike a dogfish. Yeah, well, I can actually if they're targeting other species, other yeah. species, and they're just getting in the way, but. You know, it'd be a very dull place without them, that's for sure. So will we give it another half hour to the tide yeah, pushes it up? We could give it another half hour. We, as it's a small tide, we could fish another sort of three hours up, really. But, um, you know, we, there's dogfish after dogfish. Um, there's only so much of that you can take, really. Well, we've got, come out the weed, come out the weed. We've got another doggy. We seem to be getting lots of dogs now. Craig just had that one. There we go, it's another dogfish. Just jaw hook this one. Nice sleepy one, yeah. 
It's not giving me any grief. So listen, we've had some fish there, seen some fish. It's getting cold now. I think we'll give it another 15 minute warning. Hook's out. It's like quarter to 12 now. We've been trout fishing this morning. I'm knackered, Mike's knackered. The fish is knackered. Let's put him back. Put him to bed and we'll go to bed. But we're gonna try that pier in the morning. Just see if we can't pick up a big, small wide lake. Here we go, buddy. He's gone. Brilliant. Nice to see the right What'd you get that one on, Paul? Sand deal, double sand deals. Double sand deals, yeah. And you can see the different markings there on the uh, in the spotted, absolutely no spots of bass, apart from those sort of white ones. Yeah, and there's white lines down the like that. wings. Yeah. Oh, nice fishing. I mean, some parts of the some parts of the country they call them painted painted rays. I'm led to believe. Oh well, that's good. Right on last knockings. Target yes. species achieved. Yeah, thank Christ for that. Yeah, we, can we all go home now? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty decent. It's very fishing in mind. You've got the spot here and the small line. Yeah, it? yeah, two species. That's it. Not the biggest of ones, but it doesn't matter, is it? Well, fish is well, a this fish. This time of year, you're lucky to bloody get them, really. Yeah. There you go. That's it. That's a lovely really? picture, in fact. You still see him? Yeah. 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 Good job. Having, so I don't know what this is with this a doggy. It was just locked up solid. We went off and filled that small, uh, filmed that small eye. I don't feel any kicks. It could be a plastic bag. Who knows? But you've got to treat everything down here in the Bristol Channel as a fish. It just seems so. Like it's just a bit too much weight on it to be a bit of rubbish. You've just got to keep it coming and coming and coming. If you stop whining, it's toast, you're going to get locked in the rocks. Oh, why, did I, why did I say that word, locked in the rocks? What's a fish? Maybe he's dog, I don't know. Doggy. Oh, I nearly lost that one. There he is. He's eaten the grip lid. <laughs> oh, this is a result. No, this really is a result, folks. <laughs> not, not only have I caught the dogfish, but I've got lead tackle reeds. I've got somebody else's gear. Some other poor man has lost all his tackle, and I've got it here. So what a result that is! That lovely dogfish has got me. He's just hooked there. Do you know what? I'm never. I don't know whether I'm more pleased with that. All this free tackle I've got. Either way, let's pack up and get to bed. Consider yourself a fisherman. Just how far do you want to take it? Here we are again guys, after last night's little fishing session, it was great, we got five different species, and was that worth driving 200 miles after doing a full day's trout fishing, I have to say as all round fishermen, you guys appreciate it, hit them and run, hit them and run all the time, keep on the move, try different species, anyway, we're still down in Minehead, we are fishing at the base really of, of, of the pier, the harbour pier here, the tide's starting to flood, we've got some big baits out there, we're going to try and pick a small eyed ray up off the shore in the daylight for you and I believe Mike's going to be trying, you're going to be trying something else aren't you Mike? Well yeah, as what I'm going to be doing is we've got the on one of the lighter rods the Wessex rig, the famous Wessex rig that we've been using, it's been pretty popular on the show and we've got some fresh um, lugworm dug by Charlie, not us, dug by Charlie thank God, in uh, from West Coast Tackle, so lovely fresh uh, lugworm, two hooks, two lugworm, hopefully some flatfish, we're fishing the flood tide now Never know, outside chance, but hopefully with a bit of luck, fingers crossed, we can get a small flatty for you.
Well, I've left Mike down there looking after the rods, which is the best place because it's very windy at the moment. A bit later on, we might be able to pop behind the wall and get out of the wind. But I've come up here because I was interested, you know, about these flounders. We've only got the one rod out for flounder, but Charlie up here at West Coast Tackle, he's in the kiosk here, which is right on the pier if you need bait, incidentally. Um, come and have a chat with them. They're always pointing in the right direction. And Charlie, you know, he's got some good ideas. He's um, England international, youth yeah. international, yeah. If you can't tell us how to catch fish, nobody can. Um, so what do you rig for the flounders then, Charlie? The uh, well, rig for the flounders in the harbour is uh, six foot, three up, uh, two up, one down. So that's two hooks above the lead, one hook below. Lead clip. They're fixed, are they, Charlie? They're, They're all, all fixed with glue and sleeves on, and little beads, tiny... So that's a size 24 swivel. Now, just let me interrupt there. Glue and beads, what's that all about? Uh, these sleeves here, you see that there? Hang on a second, let's see if I can get focus on that for the folks. Yes, the mini sleeves, yeah? Yeah, um, you get them for the diameter of line, and then you little dab of rig glue, a little bit like super glue, but yeah. well, obviously designed for rigs. And then you slide it on, and it keeps it there. Safe and your swivels in between the two? Uh, be beads and swivels in between the two. Oh, I got you now, I can see it now. So it's sleeves, beads, and that locks the swivel in the middle. Yeah. And presumably it can all rotate all the way around your, your main yeah. line then. Yeah, that can go all the way around. Yeah. And no. I've, uh, for harbour fishing, I've deliberately left them uh, a little bit wider apart than usual. Oh, I see, yeah. And that's because if you sometimes you get silver eels, and I like to have a little bit of extra play there for when they spin. I see, yes, yes. Um, if I get the rest of the rig off, I would... and what sort of trace line are you making that out of? Um, the hook lengths I've got are, I think, this is sort of twenty pound or something like that. Would it be? Or? This is 0.22. What's that in English? Two Bertini Gorilla, which I think 0.22 usually is six pound. Wow, wow, well, it's light then, yeah. But I think this is about eight or nine pound due, yeah. due to the line. Still pretty light for. Uh, well, you, well, they're small fish, aren't they? You know. Yeah. They, well, I've I've gone I've gone that heavy. This yeah. that's heavy. <laughs> really. Because of the ropes in the harbour, if you hook one of them, sometimes is you can drag them in and then unhook. And oh, then I let see. The ropes go. So no distance casting here. This is quite no, close. It's accurate casting because there's a lot of ropes going into the harbour. Yeah. Um, Gone, on this rig, I've gone for a size 4 uh, B941, I think they are. Yeah. It's a Kamazan Crystal Reverse. That's slightly big for the harbour. Yeah. That's for later on in the summer, really, when the bigger flounder come in. Yeah. Um, and I've gone for a, a link loop. You carp anglers will know that out there a on the top loop. of the rig. Yeah. It makes it lighter than a swivel. I see. Uh, I, like, I like fishing them on the top of my rig. Quite a long trace here, that bottom one, it was yeah, two well, feet or so. Six foot rig. And no, cl no clip downs here? No clip down. Yeah. Uh, just a three foot, uh, just under three foot hook length. Yes. I, I rarely go clip down uh, anymore, to be, be honest. Because you don't do distance? Is that what no, it is? No, I, we, you don't depending need on bait size, for a bait on a size four crystal reverse, you can get better distance, I feel, uncli or the same distance unclipped. Yes. Um, if you get having to go any bigger, bait size dictates you're gonna have to clip down. Yeah, yeah. Um, For streamlining, yeah. Yeah, but it's all about the situation you're fishing in, and you've got to adapt to the situation. Yeah. Um, and just a single worm on there. Well, with these, because I've gone with these big hooks. This is for later on in the summer when the flat well, when all the fish are on ragworm. Yeah. Um, but this time of year. They're on little harbour rag, little maddies about that long. Yeah. And I'll go for a size 10 hook or or 12 and a little bunch of them. A uh, lugworm will do as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, little two, three ounce plain lead. You can get, depending on what rod you got, what set up. Just like a bomb, yeah? Yeah, just a little bomb. Or these. No need for grip leads at all there. No, I tend not to fish grip leads a lot up here. These. These grip really well. You wouldn't yeah. think it because they're a ball. Like a little cannonball one, yeah. Yeah. But obviously on a hard surface they roll. Yeah. But in sand, if you chuck a marble into sand, half sinks. Yes, yes, I see. So these they'll half sink and then obviously with the tide they'll wash over. Yeah. But so they can grip 
and then you can bounce them out. Yeah. And the movement. Yes. It's what gets the flounder. I see. So when you're fishing in the harbour, which you can, you'll see in a minute. Yeah. Um, just chuck it out. Uh, tighten up. Yeah. And then just twitch it back. Pull pull your line. Yeah. So there's a slight bow in the line. Yeah. Because you don't want to fish too tight. You want all three hooks on the bottom. Yeah. And then if you're not haven't got a bite within five minutes, twitch it back again, another five yards, and keep doing that until it's right under your feet and you have to reel it in. Oh, good man. Well, fingers crossed, we'll give it a go. Yeah. We're going to sit out there in the main channel first, see if we can't pick a, a ray up. And then as the tide fills up, we're going to take your advice. And obviously you're here in the, in the tackle shop, so if we don't catch, we'll be knocking on your door. <laughs> Charlie, yeah. thanks very much for those tips. That's okay. cold now the wind's up a little pin waiting but the toad elson fishing show have not blanked evidence of fish caught and uh, it's flooding a bit more now getting near high tide time it is totally teeny it is totally teeny that is looks like, he, looks like he's got oh no i thought it was a bite mark because that's like the sort of thing that a cod or uh, yeah, a bass. bigger fish would take a bass would take that definitely yeah happy with that though yeah save the blank yep <laughs>